Hello, my name is David Thorpe and I'm the Special Consultant on Sustainable Cities Collective, the foremost web space for urban leaders everywhere. Today we have with us Neil Goenflo, the co-founder of Shareable.net, a non-profit with a mission to empower everyone to share for a more joyous, resilient and equitable world. The website boasts a whole section called the Sharing Cities Network that connects local sharing grassroots activists around the world. Neil, welcome. Great to be here, David. Thank you for having me. Neil, um, will you first explain how you came to shut up Shareable and what it is? Yeah, so um, around uh, 2008, some uh, friends uh, and I were interested in sharing. We uh, um, thought it was a perfect time to start a sharing movement is in the middle of the Great Recession. And, and uh, we, I was in charge of doing the research, among other things. And uh, I dove in, and I, what I discovered is, is that I, we really didn't need to start a, move, a share starting move, uh, start a sharing movement. Um, that there was already this incredible shift underway uh, around the world, across almost every sector of society, to democratize um, our economy, and um, we needed to um, shed a light on it and connect the leaders of it. Um, and we started out by launching an online magazine, which has become the most visited online magazine about sharing on the web, um, shareable.net. And then later um, we launched our um, Sharing Cities Network and our uh, community organizing efforts to link people together to work towards uh, more um, sharing cities. So can you give us an idea of the sort of things that one can find on the website? Yeah, so what we specialize in is inspiring and empowering people uh, through true stories about economic innovations that democratize wealth. And uh, we really look uh, for things that um, upset the dominant narrative about how our economy works, that there's only one way to do things and that, and that it's inherently you know, unfair or unequal. And um, there are many examples uh, around the world, um, particularly like, uh, for instance, cooperatives. Like our awareness of cooperatives and the cooperative sector is very low, but they are very powerful and address some of the most pressing issues we have in our economy, like fair wages, expanding employment, um, improving working conditions, um, employee satisfaction and and cooperatives are worker uh, they're they're member owned and member governed enterprises lots of times with a social mi mission embedded in communities and um, there are over 800 million members of cooperatives around the world and they employ 20 percent more people than multinational corporations and this is growing as multinationals get rid of employees as fast as possible, it seems, um, you know, the the cooperative sector is, is growing because workers get a better deal there and it's better for society. And they're also better, oftentimes better business, more competitive, more resilient businesses because the workers are invested in, in the business because they're the owners. What kind of services are we talking about that people are offering on the website? It, almost every part of the economy has a kind of new or re-emergent um, democratic model that's being offered. So um, things like, uh, for instance, car sharing. So there's traditional car sharing, but it's also there's the car sharing 2.0 where it's peer-to-peer -peer and, and one-way car sharing. So car sharing is really booming. Um, bike sharing is the fastest growing form of uh, public transportation around the world. It's also uh, booming. We have the, the collaborative consumption movement. Uh, which are internet startups that enable people uh, that leverage community and network technologies to enable people to monetize their idle resources and get more use out of them and increase access to them. And, and those are, uh, they offer, uh, you know, just think of any sort of asset and, and there is a business for it, like even sharing ties and peer-to-peer -peer dog kennels and uh parking spaces and, uh, you know, luxury um, uh, purses and jewelry and dresses and it, the list goes on. So we're in a kind of uh, a sharing renaissance. Um, so I invite people to come and check it out. 
So you've got the sharing cities network. Um, why why the yeah. special emphasis on cities? Is it because it works better in cities than it does in rural areas? Well, it's a variety of factors. First of all, cities are the original sharing platform. Um, sharing is a core feature of cities. The the shared culture and infrastructure and and space um, and relationships and community are uh, you know, defining features of cities. And, and what we're doing is really building on that at a time when we become an urban species, when you know more than 50%, an urban connected species, a time when we're where uh, f- more than 50% of people live in cities now, this is a new thing, just only in like 2007, 2008, and um, where more human beings have cell phones and are connected to the internet than not. So, um, looking at the global spread of uh, sharing projects, you currently have a lot of projects listed that are in North America and a few European cities. But so far, right. you've only got one in the Far East and one in Africa. Does this mean that it's not happening there or that you just haven't connected with those projects yet? Yeah, the, um, we do have coverage, uh, global coverage, um, but our, uh, because you know we're just growing and we want to expand, the, the focus is you know started where we are from the United States and is moving outward. And, and uh, I would say that in the developed world, there's more sharing going on um, than in the developed world. I mean, I think that's the problem with the, the so-called developed world. And so we have a lot to learn um, from uh, the rest of the world. And I think I've actually a kind of, and that's the idea of the Sharing Cities Network, is a kind of exchange. Um, learning from all, of, all the different cities from around the world um, regardless of the, the economic standing. So for people uh, listening to this uh, webcast in these parts of the world, they should get in touch with you and join the network. What would be the benefits for them? Well, the, the first, the, uh, the, that they can contribute. I mean, we have a lot to learn from uh, from whoever joins and wherever they're from. Uh, our, my experience is that uh, wherever you... Wherever you go, there's a kind of different um, way of doing things and 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 also new innovations. Um, and so joining is a chance to share what you know and also learn from others. That's the main that's the main benefit. And get you know and get support and be part of a community. You know instead of working working on your own. And that's I think that's part, a big piece of our work is to show um, that. Uh, whether you're a time bank or a, a repair cafe, a free store, a cooperative, a bike sharing system, that you're part of something larger and and um, a part of a community and a movement. And, and that, I think, gives people a feeling of belonging and meaning and purpose that uh, they might not otherwise get. Mm. Um, what would you class credit unions as uh, part of the sharing movement? They've been around for a long time. They're certainly growing in the UK. Yeah, uh, you know, definitely. I mean, the, it's it's a form of consumer cooperative where the depositors own the and 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 also have a say in the in the business. They're rooted in the in the community um, and focused on um, serving the local communities with their banking, finance, and credit needs. Um, they have a long you know history around the world. Mm-hmm. Um, in the United States, I think there's over 6,000 of them, and, um, you know, and they face competition by private banks, and also uh, they, they're, they are at a disadvantage, I think, in the re- regulatory regime, so they, um, you know, it's something that, uh, that the credit union movement, you know, has to work at uh, to stay viable and to grow and expand. They, I mean, part of the reason they're, they're growing in the United States is that, is that uh, the private banks, are are strapped for you know strapped you know they have this growth imperative mm. and the easy money they made in the you know in the last part of the last century those those things uh, have waned or even disappeared and now they're uh, they're you know looking to uh, to make up the difference in fees you know so so um, credit unions are just a better deal for for uh, for depositors period. This lower fees, better rate, better loan rates. Yeah, and it's been my experience that the most successful or long-lasting initiatives occur in places where 
um, grassroots activists and top level administrators or their representatives uh, collaborate. So you get the top and the bottom meeting together in, in the middle rather than working against each other. Um, as far as these sharing initiatives go, do you have any good examples of places where that is the case? And do, do you well, agree yeah, that it is the uh, case? In, uh, sure. Yeah, take, take a couple of good, great examples, David. Um, first, in New York City, the, the, the New York City um, Council just passed a budget that has a $1.2 million uh, um, uh, that will be invested into developing worker co-ops in New York City. Now, that sounds like a small uh, amount, but that's the largest any city has um, ever devoted to worker co-ops. And they're part of a wave of cities um where the administration um, is connecting with the grassroots um, social movements and, and uh, traditional worker uh, cooperative development agencies to create more cooperatives locally to create jobs and keep wealth local. Um, so this is, uh, I think, a really positive development in the United States. I think in other places, cooperatives are are um, uh, or are more prevalent in the U.S. You know, has to play catch up. Another great example of, of the top and bottom working uh, well together, the grassroots and administrators, is the Sharing Cities um, initiative uh, uh, by Seoul, Korea. So um, Mayor Park and, and his large innovation division have created a whole uh, program uh, to increase sharing in the city of Seoul. It's a mega city. It's 10 million people. Um, you know, it's it's very modern and connected uh, city, uh, really, uh, uh, you know, sort of grown uh, tremendously just in the last 30 to 40 years. And that's also with that have come a lot of social pro pro uh, problems. So Mayor Park sees um, sharing as a systematic fix to some of the social and economic problems, problems he, um, he faces in Seoul. And and what he's doing is um, systematically rolling out sharing services by um, borough. They're, they're called, there's 25 boroughs. They're called KUs, K-U, um, uh, in South Korea. And uh, they're about the same size um, in budget and population, around five to 700,000 people each. And, and, uh, and he's piloting... Um, a, a group of sharing innovations and companies in a uh, selection of those coups and getting their uh, uh, getting the buy-in of the sub mayors and also the people and and leveraging the trust that people have in the in the city government um, uh, to get people on board right and then he's going to roll it out to the rest of you know the intention is to roll it out roll the program out to the rest of the the coups. Um, and then get the coups to, uh, in a friendly competition for grant funds um, to support more sharing. And some of these things are, are, really, are really interesting, like um, putting tool and lending libraries in, um, in the bottom floors or somewhere in the apartment buildings, um, in, in apartment buildings across the city. So this is a high-rise city. Um, very densely populated. So there is an opportunity in these high rises where a lot of times neighbors don't know each other uh, to connect and share resources and, and to scale this thing quickly. And the other thing that they're doing, it, uh, there's a whole program that, that they're undertaking. You can read about it on, on share. I'll send you the link. Um, but they're opening up their, their, their um, opening up more transparency in government and then also opening up a uh, real government owned a public owned real estate for more uses and multiple uses. That's an amazing story. Um, we'll probably follow that up uh, at some point on the website. Um, now, finally, I, you've written a book, haven't you, about uh, this topic? Would you like to just briefly, you've got about 30 seconds before we finish to say something okay, about cool. the book. Well, so we've, we've done two uh, publications recently. We've done our, our um, anthology, Share or Die, which is about this new generation coming up that's really reinventing a new way to live in the United States and beyond because they have to. They're really pressed um, for a lot of reasons to do that, and it's really exciting. So Share or Die, that, uh, we're, and we're kind of in a Share or Die moment, I think, as a, as a species on this planet. And then, and then we also published um, Policies for Shareable Cities, which is a 40-page guide uh, um, covering food, housing, jobs, and transportation, different policies 
that cities that are proven that cities can implement to help people share more in cities. Fantastic, Neil. Thanks very much. So people visit shareable.net to find out more. Bye for now, Neil. Thank you, David.